So there's this saying in the paragliding world that you start with a bucket full of luck and a bucket of skill and the luck bucket is full and the skill bucket is empty and you want to fill the skill bucket before the luck bucket runs out. Well, I think my luck bucket officially hit rock bottom on this flight. The helmet cam was totally it got bumped and it was pointed not at the wing and not at the ground but kind of just at the sun. So but it's got the audio so i'm going to play the helmet cam audio so you can hear what i'm saying and doing and anyway i'm going to show you all the footage let's review here we go <laughs> i want to redo <laughs> what a save. Hey, bad bit. I has got a little down drill. <laughs> Let's do a slow motion review and see what I'm talking about. The setting was the annual para party that I throw here at my house and my airport each year, the day and the weekend after Thanksgiving, if the weather's good. This year, we had an excellent day of weather. It was all day flying from daylight to dark. Let me just give you the full background. Matt Manyard showed up with an entire van load of wings and motors. We were just flying. We were all playing musical paramotors. Everybody's trading gear, trading wings. Let me try that. Let me try that. Let me try that. I don't even remember which wing this was. I haven't reviewed the entire set of footage yet. I'm going to do a whole separate video on the para party itself. But this particular incident was videoed by, um, uh, I think his name's Tommy. From, I know he's from Texas. He's an airplane pilot. He came out there to see what paramotoring was all about. So that's where this footage came from. Thank you. So I'm flying this wing around and it's, I think it's a B wing. I think this is a B glider. It's a gen product. I'll post the name below when I figure out what it is. I believe it's somewhere around noon. Conditions had become thermally. They weren't dangerous thermals. They weren't big thermals, but it was thermal conditions. And I made a mistake. I, I took that luck bucket and I, I dumped the whole thing. I like chugged it all the way empty. No more. And we got wind socks spread out everywhere. All the wind socks were lining up. They had been different ways, you know, thermal air. It goes this way. It goes that way. And, and my little pea brain, I thought, wow, man, conditions are nice for a, for a real good foot drag. I'm going to, I'm going to foot drag across this airport here. I'm foot dragging. I'm foot dragging and all of a sudden I get dumped. Apparently there was a there was a smooth thermal gust that I was foot dragging through. And when I plopped out of the end of it, there was a tree line. I remember distinctly the wind was coming straight down the runway. It wasn't coming over the trees at that point. But when I left the thermal, it might have shifted. The tree line might have had something to do with it. I don't think it was strong enough to make a big difference. But the moral of the story is I, I flew out of the back of the thermal on the ground. I had no room left. When I got dumped, it was probably a three, four foot altitude loss, but three or four feet, I mean, that's not a very big bump, but it's enough to put you in the dirt. <sighs> frame by frame analysis of the entire incident started at 37 seconds, ended at 39, full recovery at 40. Three seconds was the entire event from the, oh God, to I got it. Three seconds. There's not a lot of time to do much thinking. These moves have to be reflexive in nature. These are things that you have to have. Comes over years of experience. I felt myself get dumped. I immediately hit full throttle. It takes almost a second for the propeller to wind up. I had a little thrust, so maybe sub-second till I get maximum power, but from the time you squeeze it till you get a reaction, there's a delay. It's not instantaneous. The move is squeeze and pull brakes at the same time. And I went maximum brakes almost to a full stall. I hit the ground. I dragged the ground for about two seconds. When I finally feel myself lifting up, I went full stall and ran it out. And I, and I got control of the wing again. It was just a lucky save. That's all it was. It was just a lucky save. I thought it would be entertaining to share on the internet. I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to play it a few times at some different speeds and just let you look at it. Maybe you can get something. Don't do what I did. 
don't play low during thermal conditions. I broke my own rule. There's a little bit to be said for the type of glider that I was on versus the type of glider that I usually fly. And I think that's where like the big issue came in. My typical glider that I fly on the regular carries a lot more energy than this glider. So the same move on my regular glider, I probably wouldn't have even contacted the ground. It's still no excuse. I'm not offering excuses, but, but there's something to be said for my mindset, for feeling the conditions, just how big they were. It, it doesn't matter. It was a stupid move. I believe if I had been on the Hadron fully loaded the way I was, I probably would not have contacted the ground. This B Gen glider didn't carry the energy that my glider usually has and what my mind is used to. It goes back to sort of like a muscle memory. A common problem that I have is my brakes are set very low. I set them low on purpose so that when I'm in cruise flight, I can keep my hands low on the toggles and I'm not getting tired from holding them high. That's just personal preference. If you ever see my hands way down low, I'm not deep in the brakes. That's, that's basically feel pressure. Anytime I get a different glider where the brakes are probably higher, almost always throw too much brake on it just because I go back to that muscle memory thing instead of feeling for pressures. It's just what happens to the human body. It's a, it's a psychological mental thing that goes on with any of us. If you're used to one thing and you try something else, your mind in those heat of the moment times when you're launching or landing or foot dragging goes back to those, those regular muscle memories. And so I made the right moves. I salvaged the crash. There was no damage. I wasn't really even embarrassed. Actually, I was kind of proud that I salvaged it. But again, luck bucket, empty. <laughs> so there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Much love, guys. Kyle out. I, I figured it would happen. That's why you don't foot drag during thermal conditions. Huh? I know. <laughs> I, 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 bar I barely got away from that one. You want to just leave it in or you want to go again later? I oh, I mean either, either way. I wasn't, I wasn't going to land, but I figured since I salvaged it, I might as well. <laughs> huh? You broke your prop. No. No, I would have heard that shit. <laughs> I knew exactly where it was. <laughs> No, I was I was half ass ready for it because I knew it was it was if bouncy. You lost your balance. Huh? If you would have lost your balance. Please. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. I never I never was out of control. It just uh thank you. That's the moral of the story. If you take home one point out of this entire video, don't get near the ground near thermal conditions. It's just a basic rule. I screwed up. All right, these are I like to show my screw ups so that you can learn from them. That's the whole point of this. And it's not the not to show any sort of skill at all. I did salvage the mistake, but again, it probably cost me the end of my luck. The next one will probably end in a new three blade propeller, which is about a $500 mistake if you're doing the math on the whole subject. And that's if it doesn't hurt anything else. So you got to take these things into consideration. Much better than mine. <laughs>